When you're conducting research, reviewing existing studies is one of the first things you need to do. But did you know there are different ways to do a literature review? Each type serves a different purpose, and knowing which one to use will make your research process smoother. Let's break down the types of literature reviews with more detail. Narrative literature review. A narrative literature review is the simplest and most traditional way to review existing research. Think of it like telling a story. You're summarizing the research that's been done on a topic, highlighting the major findings, and putting them into context for your own research. Use this when you're doing exploratory research or need to provide background information on a topic. How to do it, pick a broad area related to your research question, find studies that discuss this topic. They can be from any source, such as books, journal articles, or reports, write a summary of what each study found, the methods they used, and what conclusions they drew, you can organize the studies either by themes, for example, different approaches to a problem, or by the order in which they were published, mention what is still unknown or areas where research is lacking. This helps show the need for your own study. Systematic Literature Review A systematic review is more detailed and organized. It's like being a detective, you have a specific question, and you're looking for all the studies that answer that question in a precise and unbiased way. Use this when you are conducting clinical trials, evidence-based practice research, or policy development, how to do it, formulate a clear research question, use frameworks like PICO, population, intervention, comparison, outcome, define a clear research question, for example, does this specific treatment improve patient outcomes in XYZ condition? Define inclusion and exclusion criteria, set strict rules about which studies to include, like publication date. Study design, decide on what types of studies you want to include. For example, you might only want to include peer-reviewed journal articles, or studies published in the last 10 years, use databases like Google Scholar, PubMed, or JSTOR to gather all relevant studies, carefully look at the quality of each study, its sample size, methodology, and bias. This ensures you only include reliable studies. Once you've collected all the data, organize it and look for patterns. Summarize the overall findings and conclude whether they support your research question. Scoping review. A scoping review is used when you want to explore a topic more broadly. It's not as focused on answering one specific question but instead looks at the whole field to see what research exists. Where the gaps are, and what could be explored in the future. Use this when you are exploring new fields, identifying gaps in research, or planning future studies, how to do it, choose a wide-ranging topic that you want to explore, instead of narrowing down your search, you gather studies that address various aspects of your topic, even if they seem a little different, group the studies by themes, methods, or findings. This helps you see how the research fits together, one of the main goals is to find what's missing in the research. Are there areas that have not been studied? Is there an emerging trend that needs more attention? Meta-analysis. A meta-analysis is a more advanced type of review that combines the results of multiple studies to give a clearer, more statistically powerful answer to a research question. It's like taking the data from several small surveys and combining them into one big survey to get stronger results. Use this when you are doing quantitative research and need to combine data from multiple similar studies to find overall patterns. How to do it? Choose similar studies. You need studies that ask the same question and use similar methods, so the data can be combined. From each study, collect important data like the number of participants, the method used, and the outcomes measured. Use statistical software like SPSS to combine the data. This will allow you to calculate an overall effect size or measure that summarizes the combined results, analyze what the combined data tells you. For example, does the treatment have a significant positive effect across all the studies? Critical review. A critical review goes beyond summarizing research. Instead, you evaluate each study's strengths and weaknesses. It's like being a critic, pointing out what's good, what's not, and suggesting ways to improve future studies. Use this when you are involved in theoretical research, analyzing methodologies, or questioning existing studies, how to do it, Review multiple studies, look at a wide range of studies that address your topic, don't just summarize the studies, critically evaluate their methods, results, and conclusions, highlight any inconsistencies, biases, 
or weaknesses in the studies. Are there problems with how the study was conducted? Offer suggestions on how future studies can be improved. This could be in terms of methodology, sample size, or focus areas. Integrative review. An integrative review is a comprehensive approach that looks at both qualitative research, like interviews, case studies, and quantitative research, like surveys, experiments. It blends both types to create a full picture of the research topic. Use this when your research involves both qualitative and quantitative data and you need a comprehensive understanding of the topic, how to do it. Choose a topic with both qualitative and quantitative research, for example, you might explore how a new treatment affects both patient emotions, qualitative, and health outcomes, quantitative. Dot, gather studies that use different methods. Like surveys and interviews, look for common themes across qualitative studies and numerical patterns in quantitative studies. Then, combine the findings to get a complete understanding of the topic, synthesize the results from both sides and discuss how they complement each other. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like it and subscribe to the channel for more easy-to-understand research tips and guides.